is called nonlinear lead square based in the identification for a continuous friction model. And the authors are Antonio Concha Sanchez and Suresh Tenoshi. See, so one of the authors are in the in this room. Please speak and put the, uh, the presentation. Please. As a reminder, you, you only have 15 minutes to make your presentation and five minutes to, for questions. <coughs> if Antonio Concha or Suris Denoshi are in the room, please. Uh, Suresh Tinoshi says that he's disconnected from the, the room. His microphone and his camera are not working. Mm. I think it's okay. No. A ver, déjeme ver qué, qué pasa con okay, Suresh okay. Tinoshi. Okay. Ah, yeah, because okay. I didn't have this. Uh, so. no, there, there is a problem with, with the microphone of Suresh, Suresh Denoshi. Okay, I think we, we hear you, please. Okay. Go yeah. on, please. I will start the presentation. Mm -hmm. You you can talk a little bit louder, please. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me right now? Yes, yes, okay. It's okay. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes. No, 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 no yet. It seems that you had some pro some problems with your transmission. Ah, okay, that's okay. <clears throat> Basically, in this paper, uh, we are going to present uh, uh, parametric identification of a uh, continuous time friction model uh, using nonlinear least square method. Okay, and this work is uh, done by Antonio Conche Sanchez and myself. Antonio is a professor at uh, University of Colima, and I work at uh, University uh, Autonomous Uni University of Querétaro. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, basically, it's like the fr uh, identification and compensation of friction is very important in motion control systems. It's like it, because it can uh, it can affect the perfor uh, performance of the position control. So it's the, normally we need to identify uh, properly and you need to perform the compensation for the friction so that you can have a high precision uh, uh, motion control system. So basically in in, uh, in case of in terms of identification of the friction, we do three, three steps. First one is we, we have to uh, obtain the friction because we do measure it. Uh, indirectly uh, or estimate it. Uh, then we need to decide a friction model, the model which we are going to implement. And the third one is the identification method. So based on the friction model, we use a proper identification method. So these are the three basic steps in the friction identification. So in the first one, uh, uh, since the friction force is a function of velocity, you and in many cases you need to estimate both uh, velocity and friction. For that, you can you can use some sort of uh, observers such like uh, extended state observer or, or high gain observer or sl even sliding mode uh, observers. So in this case, uh, we would be using linear extended state observer because uh, the uh, due to two reasons. One uh, from using LISO, you can obtain both velocity and friction. Uh, 
and also uh, its uh, model is very simple because we only have one tuning parameter that is uh, observer gain. So uh, due to that uh, reason, we will be using LISO. In other side, it's like identification. We can uh, there are two techniques. No, based if we if we have the uh, if we don't have the fr friction model, we can use some sort of uh, non-parametric uh, models like uh, neural networks or fuzzy logic or uh, even support vector machines. On the other hand, it's like uh, we can uh, we can use some uh, parametric identifications like using least squares or, uh, or other uh, many other techniques are uh, available for parametric uh, identification, even adaptive control, adaptive techniques. Sorry. So here, uh, the friction model, the main challenges. Now we will talk about parametric identification because we are going to uh, focus on parametric model. Uh, the first challenge is uh, the friction model it itself because mostly most of the friction models uh, are reported are like uh, nonlinear uh, has a nonlinear parameterization or and are uh, discontinuous. So uh, normally the most popular uh, uh, identification method is the least square one. So if we have a nonlinear parameter model, you can directly apply least squares. So on the other hand, you can use the nonlinear version of the least square that is nonlinear least square method. Uh, but one challenge there is the proper choice of the initial conditions. If you choose, uh, if your uh, estimations, actual values and the initial conditions are very far, uh, you can end up in a wrong estimation. So that's a one challenge uh, in nonlinear uh, with the nonlinear least square. The other, other is the uh, e, e, from the point of view of theoretical model analysis. For example, if you use uh, discontinuous models in your analysis, uh, anyway, in order to prove the stability, you need to find the derivative of the uh, derivative of the system dynamics. So if you have a discontinuous model. Uh, friction model normally it is uh, not we can't find the derivative at zero velocity so it can cause some difficulties in the theoretical analysis that's uh, another challenge and one more thing is uh, it's like uh, we we have to ha have some kind of sort of comparison comparative studies with the, uh, the model what we are going to use in this case we are going to use a continuous time friction model uh, that we will compare with the discontinuous one also we will compare with the a non-parametric uh, model using neural network. So these are the main uh, objective or motivations of this work. So we will go to the uh, friction models. Uh, first, uh, we will focus on the the cla uh, this classic model that uh, you can see that's a discontinuous one. So it, it is normally used to uh, model the uh, steer back effects, uh, coulomb friction and viscous friction. So that's a classical model. And on, on the other hand, we have a, a continuous version of this model. This, this is proposed by another uh, in another work. So here, uh, the thing we can see is like the second one is uh, you. Uh, it's it contains tan function, so it's a continuous. You can find the derivative at zero zero velocity. That's an advantage. But anyway, we uh, using the model two here. Uh, we you will have more estimation error at zero velocity. That's a disadvantage. But anyway, anyway, what we are going to do here is first step is we will compare the classical model with the continuous model, and we will try to modify. I mean, we try to choose the parameters of the continuous model so that it can uh, act behave like the classical model. So based on the theoretical analysis, uh, here we have the uh, classical and uh, and uh, continuous model. Based on these assumptions, if you choose the parameters of the continuous model according to these equations, uh, we can see that the the uh, continuous uh, friction model behaves similar to discontinu uh, discontinuous uh, friction model uh, that we have shown theoretically. So this will be like we will be using for uh, as a base for the identification. And now coming to the uh, velocity and friction estimation, as mentioned before, uh, we'll be using a linear extended state observer. So for that, we consider a servo here uh, where we have a, a friction is modeled using using the continuous friction model. And here uh, is the control signal, and uh, uh, using uh, encoder, we can obtain the position of the servo. 
but as usually in practical cases you will have some noise due to them it's like measurement noise added to the position so here uh, now we will represent this one um, uh, this uh, model into state space uh, using the uh, standard like uh, position as x1 and velocity as x2 and we will be using two more extended state one uh, x0 that will be integral of the position what we um, what we have measured and on the other hand we will uh, consider the friction uncertainty as a third state x3 or oh, sorry in this case fourth state so we have a four, four dimension system and uh, for this system this is the uh, this is the uh, linear uh, extended state observer with integral action okay the, this integral also will be helpful uh, for removing uh, reducing the effect of the measurement noise because uh, integrator will act as a low pass filter kind of so that is one advantage <clears throat> and for this uh, we will apply this uh, ob uh, observer to the above system and uh, finding the error dynamics which is uh, uh, which is the actual state uh, minus the estimated state we will obtain this closed loop dynamics and here you can see uh, the he, here we have a linear matrix which uh, basically contains the uh, observer gain and on, on the other hand, we have a disturbance vector. Here we can see the disturbance. We already assumed it is bounded. And here we have a derivative of the friction. Since we are using continuous friction model, uh, there is no issue with the uh, uh, unboundedness. So we, we can avoid uh, that problem in this case. So we uh, this equation we can simplify or represent using a matrix form. Uh, see here we have A is uh, Hurwitz uh, because it, it has four poles all in negative theta and uh, uh, lambda the disturbance is bounded so we can uh, we can show that the error the bound boundness of estimation error is bounded by this, these terms. The first term will be go, goes to zero exponentially and this is due to the external disturbance so we the error goes to a circle of radius this one where we can reduce the uh, size of the error by increasing the gain gain of the observer and this is the proposed uh, proposed uh, identification here uh, here we have uh, in closed loop, the servo and uh, observer. Observer will produce the position, velocity, and friction estimation. So, position and velocity will be using for uh, will be used for uh, use for the control. And the other hand, we will use an estimation, offline estimation that will be done in two two steps. First, we we will obtain the uh, <coughs> obtain the parameters uh, uh, gamma four and gamma six using least square. And based on these estimations, we will uh, we will find the initial conditions of the uh, for the uh, for the nonlinear least square. It's not. Sorry, it's not moving. Okay. Uh, we will obtain. Uh, we will calculate the initial condi uh, conditions uh, using this rule. Based on that rule, we can guarantee that uh, the uh, estimations will converge to the actual parameters so that's uh, that's uh, one and we will see first we will see the comparisons very fast first uh, first we com uh, we consider the gammas for the continuous model based on the relations what uh, parametric relations what we seen in the uh, second slide we will obtain the parameters of the discontinuous model and in the graph you can see both are actually behaves very similarly so classical and the continuous behave according to the parameter what we have proposed and now uh, this is the performance of the observer uh, only thing here is uh, we guarantee the persistency of excitation uh, in the desired trajectory so that we can estimate all the six parameters so he, he, these are the position uh, velocity and the friction estimations And last, uh, we obtain the uh, identification, uh, uh, estimation of the friction. Uh, here, uh, uh, we obtain first, uh, using the first steps, we, we, we obtain the gamma four and gamma uh, six. Based on that, we, uh, we calculate the initial conditions and using analysis, we obtain very close close parameter, which is you can see the estimated parameters are very close. Also, we, we use a feed forward neural network 
with one hidden layer with uh, 10 hidden neurons. And uh, it is trained using Levenberg MacQuart uh, uh, algorithm with a learning rate of 0 0.05. And we do a comparison with the parametric model obtained using non-linear non least square also with the uh, neural networks. So we can see it's, it's like uh, it's um, set, uh, the performance, the identification is good. Finally, we use these two models, the non-linear least square based and the non uh, neural network based in the control just to uh, validate the compensation. And these are the uh, results we have obtained. We can see that uh, we have a good uh, compensation results. So basically, th that's uh, that's what the paper is. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone uh, has any question? You can use the chat to, to make the question, please. Or directly using your microphone. Questions? No. <laughs> I have a question. All your results yes. are from uh, simulation. Yeah. Okay, what's going on in the case of real-time experiments? Because in, using simulation seems nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in the case uh, of real-time control, you have uh -huh. issues like uh, saturation, measurement noise, and yeah. uh, model dynamics. So why do you mm -hmm. think about the, the behavior of your controller uh, mm -hmm. in the case of real-time control? Uh, actually, in this paper, we only focused on simulations, uh, but actually we also have extended these results using experiment study and another control design. So there we, uh, we have obtained, actually we use this, this uh, friction model based on linear least square, and we have designed a, um, a controller based on backstepping, and we have done the experimentations. And based on the results, uh, we have obtained very good results actually. So in experiment, uh, we we obtain good results. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, in your presentation, you you don't mention the case of uh, uh, dynamic models for friction. For example, the Liu uh, long green ah, yes. model, because uh -huh. they, they are a little bit complicated, but uh, they are more describe uh, better the effect of friction at low velocities. What do you what do you can, what you can say about the, these models? Yes, actually, in that dynamic model, we we are we are defining another subsystem for the friction, so it has its own internal states. So okay. yeah, it's like it, it the advantage is it's like a, you, we can obtain more real estimate of the frictions. But uh -huh. the, if you the the aim of this one is like we want we want to use an offline model for to use in a controller. It is it is not very complicated. So if you use the other one, uh, it's going to be you have more compli complicated system, and yes. uh, the overall analysis is more complex. So okay. it's like uh, here we we wanted to simplify and we wanted to focus on simple design but very good uh, performance. Okay, okay, okay. For simplicity. Okay. If, if more question, please. Or we finish this presentation. We we thank you, uh, Sorish, for the presentation. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we pass to the next. Uh, it's going to be me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want this? The next talk is adaptive track and control by uncertain Dolphin Holmes system. And Suresh Tenoshi will be the presenter for this talk. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, uh, you can see the presentation, no? Yes, can yes. you see the presentation? Yes, yes. Yeah. okay. okay. Okay, so uh, the, the next work, this uh, this work is basically uh, to propose an adaptive tracking controller for an un uncertain Duffing home system. It's a it's a, cha a chaotic system. Uh, the others are same. So we directly go to the system dynamics. First of all, uh, uh, equation one represents the dynamics of a Duffing home system. You can see here. Uh, here we have a nonlinear 
nonlinear stiffness where the linear part of the stiffness is negative and uh, nonlinear part is a cubic uh, stiffness term. Due to this nonlinearity, uh, this system produces chaos and limit cycles. And also it has two stable states, one, uh, one at plus or minus one and zero. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> here we assume that the damping theta is unknown. And the control objective for this case is like uh, we are we are going to consider a reference model with same dynamics but different parameters, uh, which is excited by a, a sinusoidal harmonic input with uh, where we can choose a, a, a magnitude and frequency so so that we can have a uh, we can have a desired uh, trajectory from the mo reference model. So the idea here is to uh, design a controller for system one so that it can track the uh, position generated by this reference model. Also, we need to identify the unknown damping factor theta of the, uh, the actual system. And here for that, we will be using contraction and theory. It's like uh, it's another kind of incremental stability analysis. And there it says it's like uh, we, we can consider the model reference based adaptive control of form equation three, where uh, the, this is uh, this dynamics, this is a closed loop dynamics of the system that we know. Theta is a function of the tracking error. And here we have a, a Y is the regression matrix and theta is the vector of para, un, unknown parameter, para, which are constant. We assume that these parameters are constants. So if you assume uh, if this parameter is uh, linear, if linear, if we, if we can parameterize it linearly, we can represent the that term using uh, like this, where we have theta uh, hat is the estimate and theta tilde is the estimation error, where we obtain the estimation using this adaptive rule. So we have the equation four and five uh, as the closed loop dynamics. And uh, if you calculate the Jacobian of equation four and five with respect to theta and, uh, sorry, with respect to Z and theta, we obtain uh, one uh, closed loop dynamics as represented in the matrix form. So uh, now applying the contraction theory, we can say if the J, J is the Jacobian of the closed loop system, and if it is uniformly negative definite, that, that means if the symmetric part of the Jacobian has uh, negative eigenvalues for entire time, if, if that is fulfilled, and the regression matrix it's uh, bounded. So if 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 the if we have a uh, this kind of closed loop structure, we can uh, assure that using contraction theory we can assure that the system is uh, semi-contracting. Th that means the set that uh, the tracking error goes to zero asymptotically, and uh, the estimation error remains bounded. So here what we will do is like uh, we have to design a backstepping controller such that we obtain a closed loop dynamics in this form. So that's uh, that's what we did in this paper. So for that, we represent the uh, system, uh, the Duffinghom system in state space representation. And for for uh, performing best stepping design, we define two state variables, theta one and theta two. Theta one basically is the position tracking error and theta two is uh, kind of uh, velocity tracking error. So using that one, if you calculate the uh, Closed loop dynamics, we obtain these two equations. These are the closed loop dynamics of the uh, system. And here we have the control signal. Uh, signal. So now apply, uh, we are we will propose these con this control signal and where the where the parameter is unknown parameter is estimated using this adaptive law. So if you do uh, if you apply these two equations in, in the closed loop dynamics, we obtain this this matrix. So this is similar to what we have seen in the lemma, uh, the one we use based on the contraction theory by substituting uh, theta as theta. And if this is the uh, closed loop Jacobian and this is the regress regression matrix. So now from here, it's very clear that uh, the, this closed loop dynamics is uh, semi-contracting. That means the tracking error theta one and theta two goes to zero asymptotically and the estimation error of the parameter theta remains bounded. So that is what we that is what we can see in this theorem. So uh, we obtain stable closed loop dynamics or asymptotic convergence of the tracking error and bounded estimation error. 
but we we uh, we can go one step further because here you, using this theorem we only can say uh, uh, the parameter estimation is bounded we cannot say it uh, the estimated parameter converges to the actual parameter to prove that uh, we will uh, we will use the persistency of excitation condition so uh, <clears throat> this is the dynamics of the set set at two set two so after applying the control and here we can see as per the theorem one set one goes to zero set, okay. set two goes to zero and x2 goes to xd and uh, here we can see that c, uh, derivative of c, uh, set two is uh, goes to zero because uh, set, set two goes to zero and derivative of set two is uniformly con continuous so using bar 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 lemma we can uh, tell that set two as uh, dot as, uh, derivative of set two goes to zero. So uh, equation 15, we can represent in this form. So there we have uh, desired velocity of the desired trajectory and uh, tracking error. So uh, <clears throat> here we need to see uh, which one goes to zero. In this case, uh, if, if you have a persistently exciting velocity, uh, the desired trajectory, then only solution is the estimation error goes to zero. So uh, if, if the system, if the mo reference model is persistently exciting, then uh, we can assure that the estimation of estimated parameters goes to <coughs> actual parameters asymptotically. So that's a uh, <coughs> proof. So here we will see some basic simulations. Uh, we, choose, uh, we choose the actual system parameters and reference model parameters. Here basically only difference is the initial conditions because we have different initial conditions and we choose the gain as one and or two. Here you can see that uh, in very fast, uh, in five seconds or 10 seconds, you can see the tracking error goes to zero. And the estimation, uh, the esti uh, theta estimate goes to the actual value as it, it goes to actual value in 10 seconds. And this, this is the control. Only difference here is if you choose larger gains, the tracking error goes to zero very fast. That's usual, uh, common in adaptive control. And uh, only thing is like if you choose large gain, the, we, we can see a large trans, uh, transient in the estimation. But, but uh, at last, both converge in say, uh, almost in the same time interval. Now we if we choose different conditions here. Uh, initial conditions are different. Also, we choose different parameters for the reference model. But for this condition also, you can see that uh, we almost obtain uh, obtain same same results. So it's like uh, tracking error goes to zero. Also, estimation error also goes to zero. The conclusion is like uh, we have proposed a new adaptive tracking controller for dumping hop system, with, which have uh, one uncertain parameter, which is the damping. Uh, the, uh, the closed loop and stability analysis theory, and we have shown that uh, the position tracking error goes to zero asymptotically. Also, using persistency of excitation condition, we have shown that the estimated parameter converges to the actual parameters asymptotically. And yeah, that's a presentation. Okay, thank you so much. I have a question from my local uh, Lofo Peruskia. And uh -huh. the question is, do, do the states converge to the desired states in presence of a bounded disturbance? And uh, he says, I think that you can only warranty UUB uniform <laughs> ultimate boundedness. What, uh, what's your response? Okay, uh, that's the state. Can... No, uh, when when we have we have disturbance, no, we cannot uh, use the controller. The one we propose, we cannot uh, guarantee asymptotic tracking. Only we can guarantee a uh, guarantee the bounded performance. Because bounded. Bounded. Because if you, if if there is an uh, external disturbance, you will lose uh, we you will lose the asymptotic tracking performance. In that case, you need to use some kind of uh, maybe observer for uh, obtaining the disturbance and compensate that. But as per the present design, no, you cannot assure. Only, only this is for the parametric uncertainty. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question, please. More questions. I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, what is the difference between using a standard Lyapunov function and mm -hmm. in, in the case of Slotin's contraction theory? Okay. Uh, so using your approach instead of using Lyapunov functions? Uh, Lyapunov is very popular and um, we are uh, it's like we are more familiar with uh, Lyapunov. The thing uh, there are a few differences between Lyapunov and contraction analysis because Lyapunov we do the analysis based on equilibrium points. Okay. And in contraction theory, uh, it's like incremental stability. It's like basically you will see uh, we don't have to know the equilibrium point. It will show the convergence of trajectory to each other. So that's that's a that's a principle behind contraction theory. Okay. So it's like uh, that will be is like uh, for observer and controller. I think it's more appropriate because if you apply contraction, it's if it is contracting means uh, estimation is going to the actual system. So because converging convergence of trajectory to each other. So that's an advantage. But uh, the thing is like uh, sometimes contraction theory is complicated for some systems because here we use backstepping so that we obtain that structure. Sometimes it's going to be complicated. So if it is, if you can find uh, that, if you can apply, yeah, it's good. Sometimes it's complicated. So it's we complicated. have to go back to lab. Mm -hmm. So in your case, your results are uh, local, are not global. No, it's global. You used, yeah, because you are using the linearization of the system in your analysis. No, it's actually we, we are talking about the error. That is not the system linearization. It's a, it, we are, the, that linearization is for error dynamics, Z1, not for X1. Okay. Because we are representing with, with respect to Z1. It's kind of because we are not losing the uh, nonlinearity there, but okay. uh, it's like uh, we are removing, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, compensating, I mean, we are removing the nonlinearity of set dynamics that is the closed loop dynamics so it's okay. little different not actually linearization but yes it's like uh, because we, we, that system still have chaotic behavior okay okay thank you sir uh another questions no no question no more questions so i thank the the author we pass to to the next presentation thank you doctor mm -hmm. okay uh, the next presentation is called Parameter Identification from Hybrid Model Using PCO and Penalty Function. The authors are Ricardo Cortez, Jair Lozano, and myself. And I think Ricardo will, be the person, will make the presentation. Please, Ricardo. Uh, yes. Um, and Suresh, if you can uh, <laughs> leave the, the, the screen. <laughs> Suresh? Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, yeah. Mm, 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 doesn't give me permission to share the screen. Un momento, ahorita lo reviso. Inténtelo de nuevo, por favor. The screen can be seen. Perfecto, ya se ve. Ya, it's okay. So, I'm going to start. Uh, the topic is parameter identification for my hybrid model using PSO and penalty functions. Uh, my name is Ricardo Agan Cortes Vega, and the other authors are Jair Rosano and the PhD Ruben Garrido. The goals of this study are analyze the performance of the PCO algorithm as tool to identify hybrid models, evaluate the way the performance function must be set for the case of hybrid models and the feasibility of penalty functions to perform this identification. This is the one of the presentation, and we are going to start with the hybrid model. The model of a hybrid model is a special mathematical tool that's used to describe a complex phenomenon and 
separate into very simple equations. This is the part H. You could see H could be decomposed into more simple equations H1, H2, Hx that are switched based in conditional expression P1, P2, Ps. The PCO algorithm is a very common technique used to solve numerical optimization problem. This is based on the idea that each solution is considered a particle that share information with the other particles with the other particles in order to minimum a performance index J. Uh, first is need to select a feasible set of solutions based on kappa and bar epsilon that in this case are inequality equation and equality equations. The idea of the optimization problem is to find an optimal value, j star, that minimizes our values of j for the rest of the solutions. The PCO algorithm considers a dynamic of the particles. Each particle has their own dynamic. In this case, we have the velocity and the position in the, in the solution space. We have the term phi1 and phi2 that corresponds to, uh, corresponds to bone signals between 0 and 1 and are generated by random. The TMP and L are weight terms that determine the importance of each one. We have the position of the particle and the positions that are defined as follows. This is the position star E. This is the best position from the particle if. This means the position of the particle E are saved and is selected the one that uh, minimize the term J of the, the performance functions J. In this case, the position star is just the best position in the actual position of the swarm. The parameter identification of a hybrid model it requires to consider a virtual model. In this case, we have a physical model and we have and we need to emulate that physical model using a virtual model. In this case, the model is proposed as follows. We could see that we modify this theta, that are the parameters of the system, with theta hat, that are estimated parameters. In this case, we need two elements. First is the data acquisition. We need to make a set of experiments in order to save data on, from a file to make the comparison. The minimum data required is the input of the system U and the measurable output G. The PCO optimization problem is, implement, is implemented as the PCO is mentioned. It must be mentioned that the performance function J requires to simulate the virtual system. So we could see there is the scheme of the implementation of the PSO. We could see that for each particle of the swarm, we have their own particle dynamic. We define the L best position, that is a memory term. We have the virtual system and a dynamical simulation that tests the estimated parameter, is tested in the virtual system and is compared the virtual, the virtual output and the real output in order to determine the term J, the performance function. This is repeated for all the particles in the swarm and it repeated until a solution is reached. In this case, for the classical system that does, doesn't have hybrid behavior, the performance functions could be, be, could be seen as this. This gives the absolute value of the real output and the virtual output generated by the particle. But in the case of the hybrid functions, we have that we make the switching between the between between them based on the terms p1, p2, pn. And to solve this problem, we propose another suitable performance functions. We consider this term eta g. This is the g is a penalty functions. This means we consider all the cases, H1, H2, Hn, but we decrease the cases when are not considered, and we, cons in, and we set that eta g as one for the case when 
the switching case must be applied. This is to avoid the switching, the switching between functions. In this case, we are considering a case of a study. It's a shared memory array strings. It's a model of force. We have this model. We have a temperature that is a dynamical element. We could see that is modified by alpha and beta. This is the temperature. This is the input. You could see that is a square term because it's, a, it's the current. The current increase the temperature of a metallical element without considering the, the, the current sense. And we have the ambiental temperature. We could see that we have a term gamma that depends of T and the derivative of T. We have that this hybrid function is the following. It could be seen that this is a sigmoid and change between the positive value of the derivative and a negative value of the derivative. In this case, we have a first performance functions that considers the switching process, as you could see. This is the model and this is the real output. In this case, it's a simulation. And this is the second case. This case consider both of them at the same time. First, first term, second term. We have the terms eta1 and eta2. And eta1 is defined as follows. Uh -huh. We could see that depends of the temperature of Tb and a term chi e. This is the why the performance functions could be seen. We could see that eta1 is zero for the case below, uh, before zero, and become one very close to one in the positive values. Eta2 is positive in the case before zero, and after zero becomes near to zero. In this case, the term in OKE modifies the, the speed, the speed required to become zero. You could see uh, when K is four, the change is very slow, and with we change for 50, become very, very, very fast, almost immediately. In this case, the results shown is from a simulation setup. This is the setup's used. Uh, the PSO has been tuning with the raised toe. We have a wrong record integration method, and we define Q1 and Q2 as 50. At the same time, we use 30 times the execution in order to perform the statistical analysis requirement. First, we must, men we must mention that the time required for the PCO algorithm to end the, the identification of the parameters using G1 is 7,000 seconds approximately, and is higher in comparison with use G2 that is 1600 is very, very low. In this case, we could see that the use of the solution functions might the, might the computational process required is higher than in the case of penalty functions. We could see the median of the estimated parameters of the ec meow model. We could see that using G2 is very is similar or is more close than the original elements of the model used to the test. In this case, we could see the output, uh, the, the blue elements are the original model, and we could see that the ones obtained estimated with G2 are closer than the ones of the, uh, estimated with G1. In this case, we also study the deviation. We could see that the changes between the edge execution of the algorithm are lower when G2 is used. And a Bonferroni test is a post hoc test, is used to determine that these changes that are seen in the results are based on the behavior of the performance function and not in the stochastic nature of phi1 and phi2 that are in that are in the dynamic of the particles. We could see that are clearly different. 
As conclusion, the PCO is a feasible tool to solve the parameter identification problem of a hybrid dynamical system, but require a correct set of the optimization problem and the performance functions in order to provide good results. Mm -hmm. The use of the penalty functions improves the quality of the estimated parameters and the penalty functions also decrease the deviation of the estimated parameters between the executions of the PCO algorithm. So that's all. Thanks. Okay. Is there any questions? Or questions? For questions, you may use the chat instead of uh, talking in your microphone, or you can use your microphone. Seems you are not very excited about the presentation. <laughs> Okay, I have a question, Ricardo, even if I am the author, one of the authors. What is the role of the uh, persistency of the excitation in your approach? In this case, the persistency excitation has not been tested, the change of the persistent excitation. Uh, the excitation signal has been a diophene oxidator uh -huh. that provides several um, several spectral components and okay. assure the person, persistent excitation in classical algorithms. In this case, we didn't take it, uh, didn't take into account directly use a signal that fulfilled our requirements. Okay. In, in the case of measurement noise, and, <coughs> uh, that's a very important point. In this case, we are considering that the performance functions and the penalty functions use that term, the derivative of the temperature. The, the, the okay. In that case, a, a problem in the experimental with the temperature is that poses very, very much noise measurement. Yes. A, for a practical implementation, must be, a, must be required, could be used a deep zone, a filter, but okay. that is future work. Because you have measurement noise, you you may obtain a lot of switches. Yes. The noise. So yes. You, you need to attenuate, attenuate the noise, the, the measurement noise. Yes, or discard some part of the of the of the measurements around the zero. Okay. Okay. If there is any question, please. No. Well, the participants are a little bit tired. <laughs> they don't want to, to, to make some questions. OK, thank you, Ricardo. And we pass to the next talk. The next talk is called an input error method for parameter identification of a class of Euler Lagrange, Lagrange systems. And I think Adolfo Perugia will be presenting this this yes. Can you give me access, please? Access, or por favor, para. One moment, please. Sí. It's ready now. All right, go ahead, right now. Perfect, thank you. Can you see my slides? Yes. Perfect. So hello everyone, hope you are doing well. And this time I will present the work name Input Error Method for Parameter Identification of a class of Euler Lagrange systems. And this work was made by Dr. Ruben Garrido, Dr. Wenju, and by myself, Adolfo Perusquia. So parameter identification is a well-known control method problem which seeks to estimate the parameters of a system these parameters give useful qualitative information for controllers gain tuning of model-based feedforward and feedback controllers. There exist several kinds of methodologies to estimate system parameters, either offline or online. For example, least mean squares, recursive leaf squares. Neural networks can be used, which work in open loop and require B-wise stability, which is not always the case. 
Other methodologies work in closed loops, such as adaptive controllers, sliding mode, identification, which exhibit good control results and parameter convergence is achieved on the fulfillment of a persistent excitation condition. Most of the identification algorithms uh, are offline and do not keep a convergence analogy result, either using the PE condition or using offline or online methods. So the main motivation is that there are two main techniques that are used for parameter identification in the last decade that are, close the, that are named the closed loop output error and the closed loop input error. So that are given by th these names. And here on the one hand, the closed loop output error, it requires value of the parameter estimates obtained previously using under open loop conditions. In mechanical system, for example, it uses filters to estimate the angular velocities and accelerations, and hence the asset estimates are obtained. This method does not present stability analysis or convenient results. On the other hand, the clear or the input error method, it, it has been used to estimate parameters of a DC server mechanism. It constructs an estimated model of a DC server mechanism in closed loop with a PD control law. So in this method, stability is analyzed without considering disturbances or PD condition. So motivated with these two examples, this work reports an online estimation, uh, an online uh, parameter identification algorithm using a clear approach for a class of Euler Lagrange systems. And we consider two cases, exact model matching and estimation error. So the class of Euler Lagrange systems that are going to, I'm going to talk about is given by this kind of equation where this J, R, and P calligraphic are the M times N matrix of inertia of our dissip dissipative terms and compliance terms. Here Q and C are the non-conservative forces and QC the conservative forces. So we can express this dynamic equation in this form where A, C, V, and D are given by this expression. So these are the parameters that we want to estimate. And this particular form is needed for this particular approach because we avoid the measurement of the second derivative of the states. So here is the diagram of the proposed approach. First, we have the other Lagrange system that is controlled in closed loop by a PD control law. So here, the main idea of the peak control law is to stabilize the Euler Lagrange dynamics, not to converge to zero or or converge to a or converge to the start trajectory, only to stabilize the system. Then we construct an estimate model of this Euler Lagrange system using the same PD control law, but we that but use the states of the estimated model. Here we use the input error of the real system and the estimated model to update, to uh, to fit an identification algorithm in order to obtain the estimates theta. So basically this is the main uh, diagram of the identification technique that is proposed in this paper. So we have a PD control law given by this form where we have the proportional gain, the derivative gain, and we add the persistent excitation condition. So in order to guarantee parameter convergence. So the Euler Lagrange system under this PD control law gives this closed loop system, which can be parameterized as in linearly using a product of a regressor and a parameter and a vector of parameters. Here the regressor phi is given by this matrix where the O time symbol means the Kronecker product. And here back is the vectorization of matrix A, C, and V. Also, if we have the parameterization of the Euler Lagrange system, we can make also the same to the estimated model. Here, the estimated model use the estimates of A, C, B, and D, and we use the same PD control law with the same gains and the persistent excitation signal, but using the signals of the estimated model. So the closed loop error between this and this give this equation, which can be parameterized using a regressor phi y and a vector estimates theta hat. So here have the same structure, but 
One important thing of this model is that we don't need that this regressor is built of measurements of the estimated model and not measurements of the real system that can be noisy. So that's the, one of the main advantages of this approach, that our regressor only contains measurements of the estimated model. So first, let's consider the exact model matching case, where the identification error can exactly estimate the only Lagrange system parameters. So we define the error between the, the Euler-Lagrange and the reference model, which satisfy this equation, and the closed loop error dynamics is given by this part. So you can see that only appears the regressor that contains only the measurements of the estimated model, which is, which is very useful because we can avoid to obtain bias estimates when we uh, start to obtain the parameters of the algorithm. So we define the input error as the difference between the estimated model and the Euler-Lagrange system, which satisfy this equation of error. Our first main result is stated in theorem one, which says that if the parameter estimates theta are updated using this gradient update rule, and this condition is fulfilled, then the parametric error the error and the states of the estimated model and the regressor will remain bounded and the input error converges to zero. So you can see the paper to refer to, refer to this term result. And to guarantee parameter convergence, we need to fulfill the following condition that is a persistent of exciting condition. That means that the product of the regressor phi y is not singular and bounded in any window of size t, t plus t. Now consider the estimation error case where the identification error exhibits a small and irreducible error due to noise, disturbances, or model dynamics. The closed loop error is given by this equation where this epsilon is given by this expression and is an irreducible error which is greater than zero but bounded. So our second main result is given by theorem two which establishes that the error dynamics trajectories are uniformly and ultimate bounded, and the parameter estimates theta hat remain bounded under PE conditions. So we'll converge to same term values, but the value maybe not will converge to the real values, but will be bounded. So that's a very important result. The, per the performance of the proposed approach is assessed using a four degree of final robot actuated by a DC motors and it by a gearbox. So it is well known that high gear ratio neglects the nonlinearities of the robot, such that it is possible to write the nonlinear dynamics of the robot as a linear form given by this expression, where Q e denotes the joint angles Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, A, B, and D are the parameters of the robot. So each robot is modeled as fin bars and Gaussian noise, delta Q, with mean zero and small variance sigma square, was added to the model in order to model the measurement noise. So here we have to estimate 12 parameters, three for each degree of freedom. The P signal is designed as a sum of sinusoidal functions with low frequency to excite the robot modes and keep tracking a smooth trajectory. The PD gains are turned manually until trajectories of the robot dynamics were stabilized, and the final gains were set to 12 and 5, where I is the identity matrix of 4 times 4, and the update gain of the gradient upgrade rule is given by gamma equal to 20I. So here are shown the identification results. Uh, that the estimated parameters converge to the near real values as is shown in this table. Here are the real approximate values of the robot estimates, and here are the estimates that we obtain using the identification algorithm, which are very close to the real ones with a small error uh, or small parametric error. To verify the reliability of the approach, we use the final estimates and compute the next feedback linearization controller in a tracking problem. Here, the results show uh, accurate and good tracking results. And we also use the mean square error to show numerically the effectiveness of the approach. So 
the results are given by this question, which seems that they are very small uh, error using this, this technique. So in conclusion, this paper provides an input error identification method for parameter identification of a class of Euler Lagrange systems. The regressor uses measurements of the estimated model states it's instead of the state of the real system, such that noise and high pass filters are avoided. Stability and convergence of the complete closed loop system is assessed using the penalty stability theory under PE conditions, and numerical simulations are carried out to validate the approach. So that's all for my for my presentation. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any question, please? You can use the chat. I think no one is here with the presentation. <laughs> it's very early. <laughs> questions? Ah, I, I have a question. OK. okay. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Dr. Good afternoon. Robert. It's a nice to see you again. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, uh, are you planning to to test the identification method in experiments also? Yes, it's also planned to test it using another approach. You see, using a composite update rule that will take into account uh, another. Methodology, another methodology to reduce the estimation error that is given by this part. Here, we are trying to use a composite rule in order to reduce this estimation error and to test. Uh, but the main problem is how to design the persistent excitation condition. Since we are or here, we are applying in robot manipulators. The persistent signal has to be accurately designed in order to avoid damage to the robot and the environment and its surrounding environment. That can be very dangerous. Okay. Yes, M maybe you can use a, a robot, no? Also because you simulate in a robot, maybe you can do the experiments in in a robotic system, maybe. Yes, yes, you can do it in a robotic system. But the main problem, as I told you, is that robots are very dangerous uh, <laughs> for estimation. So okay. we have to use very uh, and a very accurate persistent external condition. OK. OK, thanks. No worries. Not the questions, please. Any questions? I'm ah, sorry. No. <laughs> May I have a question only to, because I think yes, about the, our approach. The, uh, what do you think about the problem when <clears throat> you have a uh, inertia matrix which is not constant? When the inertia matrix is not constant? Uh, remember uh, some years ago we yes. talked about, about the, this problem and for that reason we abandoned uh, the, this this problem because it's easier to to use uh, a constant matrix. But what happens in the case of a non-constant matrix in the case of a robot manipulator without transmission, without gears. Without gears, the yes. main problem that is is that the inertia matrix makes the esteem the, the parameter estimates will be nonlinear. We have no linear okay. parameters, so we cannot apply this technique. The, the, directly no. Okay. So we need to think in another, another way to, to solve yes. the problem. Yes, because that is the reason that we have to use this. Let me show. Yes. We have to use this specific form. Yes. In order to 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 apply yes. this method. Okay, okay, thank you, and congratulations for your <laughs> for your presentations. And thank you. Okay, uh, the next talk will be uh, the, the name of the next talk is by inspired optimization to improve neural 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 identifiers for discrete time nonlinear system. The authors are Felipe Guerra, Ramon Garcia Hernandez, and Miguel Llama. I think Miguel Llama, I, I saw Miguel Llama. So, please, your presentation. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I have yes, yes. Oh, Juan Felipe, okay. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> Miguel Llama, now you can present. Yes. Okay, uh, can we access to 
And also, you, you already have the privilege. Yes. Beg your pardon? Is Juan Felipe Guerra the presenter? Ah, sorry. Yes, he is the, he is the presenter. Uh, I have problem with the webcam. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can use your microphone, I think. Okay. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes, go ahead. It's okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Juan Felipe Guerra. I will present by inspired optimization to improve neural identifier for discrete time nonlinear system. The co-authors of this work are me, my advisor, uh, Dr. Ramon Garcia Hernandez and Dr. Miguel Angel Yamaleal uh, from Instituto Tecnológico de La Laguna. Uh, this presentation consists of five sections. Identification, uh, introduction, neural identification, bio-inspired algorithms, uh, experimental evaluation to, for a two degree of freedom robot, and finally conclusions. I will begin uh, by defining the problem statement. The artificial neural network training process consists of the search for the values of the weights that minimize the error in the training in the training set. Uh, in first stage, it's possible to perceive the neural training as no linear optimization problem without restrictions where the decision variables are the weights and the objective is to reduce uh, the training error. As of this, the motivation of this work is to implement different bio-inspired algorithms to design an optimization technique for the same parameters of the uncertain common filter UKF in training neural network. Uh, the training of the high order neural network using Kalman filter has been widely discussed in previous works. Uh, therefore, the UKF is an optimal estimator, is suitable tool for this task. So, uh, continuing to the next section, uh, the mathematical preliminaries used in neural identification are described as follows. Uh, we consider uh, this class discrete time nonlinear and interconnector system that can be represented in nonlinear block controller for MBC incorporated by R blocks as shows in equation one, uh, where the system states are denoted by vector G. Uh, the F and B are nonlinear function with initial conditions equals zero. Gamma represents the interconnecting terms of the H2 systems and these terms uh, with proper dimensions. And UE is the input vector. Uh, also, F, B, and Gamma are assumed, uh, non, uh, assumed smooth and bounding functions. Uh, once the system is the MDC form, we use it a uh, discrete time recurrent high order neural network to identify it using equation two, uh, where uh, where X is the neural states, W is the neural weights. As of G are the activation function of the system states, which are hyperbolic tangents. Uh, apostrophe W are the fixed parameters uh, and those terms with the proper dimensions. Uh, the neural label weights will identify the interconnection given by gamma in equation one. So uh, the training, the neural network in equation two, uh, we propose to use a training law based on UKF framework described by equation three and four, uh, where E is the identification error, P is the prediction error covariance matrix, PWY is the covariance of predict output matrix, PXY is the cross covariance of the state and output matrix, W is the weighted states, and it uh, is uh, the same parameter. Uh, she is the sy uh, system state, and X is the neural network state. 
And you said uncepted transformation and covariance matrices, Q and R. Uh, we all proceed to uh, calculate the propagation of the sigma exploit to rule the observation and prediction respectively, uh, given by calibrated X and calibrated Y. Uh, it's important to remark that uh, Kalman gain matrix and covariance matrix for the UKF are bounded. Okay, uh, to finish this section, I will talk about uh, optimization objectives. Usually, uh, covariance matrices are unisolated as diagonal matrices with entries P0, Q0, and R0, respectively. Uh, given that typical these entries are defined heuristically, this work proposed the use of multiple biospired algorithms to compute online such entries to improve the UKF training algorithm. Uh, so the following section show the candidate algorithms for the optimization task. Uh, there, there are uh, multiple interpretations to define biospired algorithms. Uh, for this work, why describe it as meteoristic methods that are grounded in natural phenomena? Uh, this can be physical, chemical, biological, or social. Then uh, for this work, uh, I will separate it into method based on swarm intelligence and based on comp evolutionary computation. As displayed in figure one, uh, we selected the Antlion optimizer and Black Widow optimization algorithm, uh, which show it uh, an acceptable performance. Uh, in figure two, uh, the yellow a low flowchart uh, begins with the initialization of the algorithm, uh, proceed with the evaluation of the neural model. Next, uh, from this point, the antlion mechanism comes into action based on the way uh, the antlion hunts the ants to root sand traps. Uh, the algorithm classifies uh, the performance of the antlions uh, storing the elite, and then uh, it it's dates the position of the ants and the end of each iteration replaces the ion satellite for the best one until the maximum number of iteration is reached or stopped criteria admit uh, the algorithm obtains an uh, optimal solution uh, similarly to the ant lion optimizer the black widow optimization algorithm uh, begins with same steps, the algorithm initialization and neural model evaluation. Uh, the difference lies in the fact that the algorithm presents characteristic elements of the evolutionary computation, as we can see in the random selection parents, reproduction, mutation, and population date. Uh, with the different uh, cannibalist phase, uh, this is unique for this type uh, this is spider space. Uh, this adds the, to the algorithm greater computation between individuals, given uh, good results. And finally, uh, when max generation is reached, uh, the algorithm obtain the optimal solution. Uh, in the next section, I will talk about the experimental evaluation in simulation for a uh, robot manipulator and the figure four shows the robot parameters. Uh, this is robot uh, consists in two links and this is parameters. Uh, figure five uh, illustrated the identification escape we can use in this work. Uh, here we can see uh, the neural network series parallel configuration. And this is the scan. Okay. Um, before continuing, I must explain uh, which parameters will be optimized by by spider the algorithms, uh, including the condition used. Uh, the goal of the optimization is to find the values that initially side the covariance matrix for UKF uh, UKF training law. Uh, the algorithms are tested under 25 simulation where performer with 25 iteration, an initial population of 50, uh, 36 variables. Uh, the lower 
bound of the one times the square and upper limit uh, once times 10 to the 12 and simulant time uh, of the six, five seconds. Uh, the finest function uh, we select uh, as described by an equation in this equation uh, where T is a time simulation, TS is a sampled period, row, uh, row 1 and row 2 are a scale factor, and MC term as described by, by C, uh, by, by this equation, uh, where uh, identification error uh, is defined as difference between system states and neural states. Uh, to conclude this section, uh, the best result for SAL tests as shown in following slides, uh, the input signal were selected this way to demonstrate the performance of the neural identifier. This is uh, the input and position for joint one, and the input of position of joint two. Uh, it's important to remark that the initial condition of the neural identifier as well neural weights were selected randomly. Uh, identification error uh, remains uh, between uh, the range of the plus minus two degrees for the first joint, as shows in figure four, uh, figure eight, and figure nine. And for uh, plus minus four for the second, uh, both with better performance in the Black Widow optimization algorithm. Uh, then uh, using the convergence curves, we can observe the performance of the algorithms, uh, the advantage of the Black Widow optimization algorithm over Antlion optimization is demonstrated in, in figure, do, uh, figure 12. Uh, okay, uh, before concluding this presentation, I will show the preliminary results uh, that were obtained with ordered algorithms. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the mind region for using the ALO and BWOA algorithms is due to their performance. We can we can check with the conversion tubers in figure 13. Uh, it tells you uh, the value of the objective function in each iteration, so once you evaluation, uh, I can see the Good performance, the uh, the bot per, the bot algorithms. Uh, from this information, uh, we reach the following conclusion: uh, the poor performance of the algorithms as polar bear optimization and fire field algorithms is mainly due to the number of the individuals in the initial population and the number of the iteration the iteration performance. Sorry. Generally, uh, the SARM intelligence algorithms are faster than evolutionary computation algorithms. Uh, even the differential evolution algorithm has an acceptable computation cost and shows a hasty convergence. Uh, uh, well, using the population of fewer than 100 causes failures as in PBO and FA algorithms. Uh, the Evolutionary computer, computation algorithms tend more to solution exploitation than swarm intelligence, intelligence methods that constantly explore the search space. And finally, in the table one, we see the results of the performance of the two algorithms. Uh, considerable improvements are present, uh, approximately 56% uh, uh, using the ALO algorithm and 79% with black widow optimization compared with the heuristic selection without optimization. Uh, here concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Uh, I can hear you, doctor. There is any question? More questions? The talk is finished. I have a question uh, about the algorithm. No, not exactly about the algorithm, but the the, the issue about uh, measurement noise. So you you present uh, good results in several cases using different meta heuristics, but uh, you lack, for example, the, oh, you you have not presented the case when measurement noise is present in your your simulations. What can you, what could you uh, say about this issue? This is a, uh, bueno, uh, this word is a starting point for the application of diversive uh, nonlinear system. Uh, in this case, uh, yes. uh, this system is, it must consider a uh, high noise in the, the system. Uh -huh. um, maybe if so, uh, because, yeah, yes, because the problem when you apply this in real time is measurement noise, disturbance, so on, so on. Uh, there is a lot of problems when you apply this. So we expect that uh, a meta heuristic when working with real time data, uh, there will be some problems with measurement noise. So you may, maybe you need to consider this issue in the future for, for this research. Mm -hmm and disturbance. OK, thank you, doctor. OK, uh, I will take account. OK, OK, another question, please. No questions. If there is no question, thank you for the authors and we pass to the next and the last talk of this day, for at least of this present this session. The session, the, no, the title of this talk will be Nolian Modeling and Least Squares Optimization on Consolidation Property on Compost, Composite Soil Samples. The authors are Han Jing, Shen Mao Yi, Hugh Lawson, and Alberta Lawson. Who's going to be presenting? I need to uh, upload okay. my file. Okay. Valente, uh, the author needs permission for his presentation. Yes. Ready, permission granted. He can now present now. Okay. Thank you. Can you see it? Yes, yes, okay. Go ahead. Okay, this presentation is about nonlinear modeling and the least scarce optimization on consolidation properties of com composite soil samples. So Dr. Han Ying has prepared these slides, and uh, I'm Dr. Zheng Mao Yi, and uh, I will make a presentation on her behalf. Okay. This is a quick outline. And we will focus on the basic physics uh, index, self weight consolidation lab test, modeling on consolidation, optimization on consolidation parametrization, as well as the numerical uh, result. So Dr. Hang Ying is the associate professor in civil engineering of Southern University, and her main research interest covered hydrology and hydraulic uh, modeling, water resource management, geotech, geophysics, as well as uh, hydropower uh, like, uh, engineering. And uh, I'm Zheng Mao Yi. I'm currently a professor in electrical engineering. <laughs> Okay, Professor Lawson is the Title III Program Director at the Southern University. 
who was also the formal chair in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineer. Well, Dr. Lawson is the professor and the chair of the Science and the Mathematics Education uh, Department. Uh, we are in the same university. So a quick introduction. The nonlinear least square estimation is proposed to determine the physical index and the self weight consolidation properties of a diverse compo uh, co composite samples being homogeneous out of the tube, tube samples taken from various volumes in Louisiana. Because of the high sensitivity of soil, low pressure loading system has been applied. So the self-weight consolidation was conducted with stretches ranging from 10 to 600 PSF and one unloading segment at 200 PSF. We have a two typical data analysis approach using Casa Grandes measured or Taylor's measured. One is also based on the log time measure, the other one is based on the root time like measure. Well, the key parameter turns out the, the coefficient of consolidation and which requires a lengthy and uh, multiple procedures and uh, manually. Well, in this research, we propose a simple hyperbolic tangent model. And the parametric optimization is then conducted using the nonlinear least squares uh, estimation. The data points are collected from 0 to 100% deformation, and uh, they will be used to uh, optimize the coefficient of consolidation, uh, co uh, coefficient of consolidation CV. In this case, and uh, like, uh, it could be better, uh, better predict the time rate of a settlement itself. So simply, it's so from our result. The composite samples are well degraded and the clays with the high in, uh, in situ water content, high plasticity, low consolidation co coefficient, low hydraulic uh, conductivity. Also from the testing result, the coefficient of consolidation obtained from the Tyler's measure are slightly higher than the uh, from the uh, uh, Casa Grandes measure. So least square curve fitting has potential to provide a like, more accurate result than two existing approach. So all the experiments are scheduled under ASTM standard. Okay, so the numbers are listed in this table. The tube samples are taken from different variants and the homogeneous in our lab. The water content and the specific gravity are first measured on the homogeneous sample. The mixed slurry samples are examined, uh, examined to manually remove the gray wall sized debris like the broken cells. The uh, water contents of three complete samples are also measured and recorded. Because of the high sensitivity of oil, the low pressure one dimensional loading is used for uh, consolidation. Therefore, the stretches being uh, covered right here range from 10 to 600 PSF. We also have one unloading segment at uh, 200 PSF. So we will introduce uh, two techniques being mentioned already. The basic in, uh, physical index are listed in this table, covering the specific uh, gravity, the water content, organic content, liquid limit, plastic limit, as well as the plastic index. In this figure, it simply so us. And the high plasticity index comes from the relatively higher organic content. Simply, it shows that the composite are well degraded. Now we make a comparison, like I said, like between two existing approach, log time measured and the root time measured. And the data are under loading segment with the stress of 25 PSF applied to the specimen homogeneous from the site one sample. So both of those are conducted manually. OK, so eventually using the two tests and the, we are trying to find out the coefficient. So for the all the composite samples in the different uh, locations, evaluate using two measures and uh, being mentioned, log time and the root time. And uh, there is a, like, say, like a general trend of a coefficient of consolidation along with the consolidation pressure uh, graphically depicted. As, uh, like I said, like, uh, as being shown in the figures right over here. So there's a, ge a general, like I said, like a trend of a slightly increment in the rate of a primary consolidation, like a uh, consolidation and a small consolidation pressure. OK, between 25 to 50, followed by the slight reduction and in the consolidation rate once the effective stretch goes beyond 50. So through the comparison among like a three like a different size. It also indicates this coefficient of CV for the three samples in the site number one 
a range between 0 0.9 to 1.9, uh, 1 lower than that of like set 2, 1.5 to 4.5 uh, square feet per year. And we have the same uh, like a uh, consolidation pressure being applied. That is a 20 to 600 PSI. So that is uh, based on the traditional approach. Now we want to introduce our new approach. That is the modeling on consolidation. And uh, before we do that, we also need to use some background information because we will have the popular one dimensional consolidation model turns out to be the relatively simple. It has uh, so many assumptions. We have the constant total stretch, constant permeability coefficient, constant volume compressibility coefficient. Now you also consider the uh, right linear elements of a soil so that the vertical direction seepage uh, flow takes place. That simply it has been simplified into the partial differential equation. So this uh, uh, second order, like a partial differential equation, will show us the model of a consolidation. Well, U right here is the ex uh, ex uh, excess pole pressure. Z right here represents the uh, element types in this uh, certain layer. And T is nothing but the elapsed time upon uh, loading. So now we have a numerical so a solution for this. The coefficient of uh, consolidation can be formulated by this simple, like I said, like a uh, mathematical expression. So now, like I said, like uh, we have our uh, like a uh, K, which represents the permeability constant. We also have our MV, which represents the volume compressibility coefficient. We also have the R like a W, which turns out to be the specific weight of the water itself. So we have a minor assumptions. They could not be like I said, uh, could not match the real world problem. Therefore, we also need to introduce <coughs> the alternative measure. OK, so we can we can say the two measures, Casa Grande and the Taylor's measure are already discussed. OK, because they are like I said, like a graphical technique. Usually it's a, a very lengthy process and uh, it requires an additional amount of the time. So also like a, among like, say, like, say, like a different approach, let's take a look of the comparison between those two at the first. The first one log time measure is more popular than the second one, which is a root time measure and which is to locate the elapsed time T50 and uh, at the first. So what is a T T50? Simply we can like I said, like, uh, like a so. It takes for the soil to reach 50% of primary consolidation. That we call it a T50. Well, the corresponding vertical de deformation simply we call D50. So T50 and the D50, they are corresponding to each other. Both of those and the, uh, tell us the same thing. That is like I said, like a 50% of a primary consolidation. In this case, in empirical solution has been widely applied in practice. So this empirical like a like, uh, like a solution, we have a constant the TV50, which can be like uh, like find out from the different lookup table or handbook. OK, well, what is HDR? HDR turns out the maximum genetic uh, distance is also equal to the half of the specific uh, uh, like a uh, like, uh, height. We call it a double genetic. OK, so eventually like uh, this numerator is supposed to be like a uh, like, uh, constant in certain case. So the most important thing for us right here is a T50 which turns out to be, like I said, like, uh, the elapsed time to reach 50% of primary consolidation. This is the parameters we are focused, uh, we are focusing right now. OK, this time factor and the maximum genetic distance, they are constant for each test. Therefore, the CV coefficient and the will be determined uniquely by the elapsed time T50 itself. Also, the uh, like a deformation curve generally starts from uh, 0 percent on top until 100 percent, like I say, on the bottom, because this deformation has been considered to be increased downward in this direction. Now, the testing curve in the uh, Casa Grande's measure simply represent a hyperbolic function. In, in that case, we have, like I said, like already uh, like proposed this new model. So this new model turns out to be the nonlinear model, and it has the, a center point. This center point is associated with our T50 and the D50. OK, and also we will use the log scale in, uh, instead of a regular T50 and the D50. Oh. In this case, and uh, like I said, like, uh, we can have a, a, a new hyperbolic consolidation model and uh, being formulated as this equation. OK, so uh, here, like I said, like, uh, this function is nothing but a hyperbolic tangent like a function which equal to a ratio of like a like a combination of exponential functions. OK, it's a well known. So now take a look of our new model. 
In our new model, actually, we have uh, three parameters. We have a uh, capital A. We also have, like I said, like a T50. We have uh, alpha, right? So now with his A, capital A is nothing but the maximum deformation measured in the uh, Cassian Granders measure. Well, the def uh, uh, deformation is, is a nonlinear function of the elapsed time, T. Okay. This T could be arbitrary time. Okay. With the three parameters to determine T50 and the D50 and the alpha. Okay. So this is, like I said, like the model we have already, like I said, like proposed. Well, what is alpha? Because the T50 and the D50, we are clear. What, uh, what are they? But how about alpha? Alpha could be a parameter related to the time rate of uh, deformation itself. So we can rewrite our equation like this. So that this one, the, like I said, like a DT is nothing uh, like but a function of the T itself. Okay. Then like uh, we have like a uh, three parameters, and those three uh, three parameters and can be determined using the least squares estimation. Okay. So before we do that, we have to collect like I said like uh, enough samples. So when I'm sample points, like I'm equal to 50 or 100 are collected, and using this measure, we generate I'm observation pairs. Okay. Then compute it, like I said, like a, like a DTI from the model itself. So the actual observed, like I said, like a DI, and the, the like I said, like a, one is a theoretical value based on the value, uh, like based on the model. The other one is the actual detection and the, like a, the uh, real value. So we have like a two of those, they have a mismatch. Well, also we collect 50 or 100 points. Therefore, we generate a vector. Okay, this tends to be like I said, like a, a vector of a mismatch, or basically it represents the error. Now we have M observations, so you generate M vector. It simply represents the estimation error uh, vector. So in order to like I said, like, uh, to have the like I say, uh, to have the optimization, we also need to introduce a certain performance index or cost function. The nonlinear least square estimation is used to minimize the estimation error. The cost function is uh, uh, well defined right over here. So this cost function is also like a uh, like a very easy like I said like uh, to define. And uh, simply this cost function and the covers like a uh, I'm relevant sample points. Okay. Now for matter of simplicity and uh, we want to redefine three matters uh, like three parameters as a set one, set two, set three. So it's easy for us to make a further calculation or derivation. So T50 right here is nothing but a set one. D50 is like a set two, and alpha tends to be uh, like a set three. And our like I say error ve uh, vector is uh, still a function of a set one, set two, and a set three. That tends to be like a, like a starting point of our optimization. The next part, and the like a, simply we have a vector form of the cost function. So this uh, like I said like a, a vector form of cost uh, cost function is something we are trying to minimize. So before, like I said, like we can solve it, we have to calculate the, like I said, gradient term and the Jacobi. Okay, the gradient term of the cost function is derived by chain rule. Okay, and that then is also involved the Jacobi of, like I said, like R set itself. And uh, additionally, we can call the Heisen, and which is uh, computed by the chain rule once again. Okay, so this turns out to be like the, the, like I said, like uh, the Heisen being formulated. In our next slides, and uh, we want to introduce our like, say, like a numerical simulation. Well, the history of a nonlinear least square cost function simply consists of a term with a first order partial derivative, but it also covers additional m terms with a second order like, say, like a partial derivative. Now, in numerical simulation, for each iteration, okay, the nonlinear model could be linearized by the first order Taylor series expansion about a certain state k, okay. So the higher order terms in our case, they are neglected. In this case, we can also generate, uh, like I said, the normal equation in the matrix form and uh, the optimal solution in the least square sense. And the both of those are, are formulated as the two equations right over here. Okay. So basically, like I said, like, uh, we generate, like I said, like, uh, the like a pseudo inverse. Now, if the matrix right here is non-singular, simply in all our case, this matrix is non-singular. So we won't need to worry about this one. Then the parameters of vector right here can be determined, like I say, iteratively with initials. After initial value has been like assigned, and then what happens right here? We have like a two different approach to determine our T50 like at the end. Okay. Now we know, like I say, like a T50 is the most important like a term, and uh, we want to determine. Okay. So it's a possible like we only compare and like I say like uh, 
uh, the first uh, the first case, and uh, we want to compare the mismatch of the first component of a set i and the set i plus one. Set i and the set i plus one are two like I say like uh, like arrow like I say like uh, arrow uh, vectors and uh, in different uh, iteration like uh, index. Well, the first component is nothing but like I say like uh, set one itself OT50. Okay. The first case, we only want to apply, com uh, compare, like I said, like, uh, the, uh, like, uh, the progress of the T50 itself. Now, if this one and, uh, like I said, like, uh, uh, between, like I said, two different uh, steps, if the difference is less than, like, a uh, certain tolerance, very small number, then iteration stop. So this is the one way. Another alternative way, we want to consider all three, like I said, like, uh, set one, set two, and set uh, three, all three, like I said, like, uh, parameters. So in that case, we have a multiple parameter case. Uh, all of those are subject to estimation. In this case, we have to introduce the Euclidean norm in order to make, like I said, make sure, make a comparison. Okay, so that we have a Euclidean norm of the difference between the two vectors, the set i and the set i plus one. Then still, the Euclidean norm tends to be a scalar, so we can still set up another tolerance in order to, like I said, like stop our iteration. So the optimal first component simply serves as the T50 star to be determined. Now, if we have this T50 50 star available, and uh, simply we can go back to our like a previous like I said, like uh, equation. Based on this, if a T50 is available, then the like I said, like, uh, the coefficient of a consolidation can be determined uniquely. So that is the basic idea. Among three parameters, T50, D50, and alpha, T50, of course, is the most important one. Okay, so let's go back. So now, based on the numerical result, and the, like I said, like, uh, we have, uh, like I said, like, make uh, some like a numerical uh, simulation already, but we have a huge amount of uh, data. So like uh, this is just our starting point. The cars are grand, the grand measured and produce a slightly lower uh, like a uh, constant value and the like, uh, uh, coefficient than the like, uh, Taylor's measure. And uh, both of those are located in a range between 1.8 to 2.5 and the consolidation pressure between 25 to 600. Now from the optimal estimation using the nonlinear least squares uh, like approach, the result is around two, uh, like I said, like a 2.0 and the square feet uh, like a per, mi uh, per minute under the vertical consolidation pressure of 100 PI PSF in uh, like a uh, site number one. We have a three site. On computation time, the simulation will simply take a few seconds. That's it much shorter than any graphical approach because all the graphical uh, uh, approach has to be manually implemented. From this pre preliminary study about the feasibility, it has demonstrated that the nonlinear modeling and the optimization approach can be applied to consolidation property study successfully. Okay, so at this point, so at this point, and uh, I can uh, make some, uh, like I say, like a uh, further discussion. The conclusion has been uh, documented in these slides. And the, the lab test are uh, initially conducted to determine the number of a physical index and the consolidation properties of a composite samples. The mixed sa soil sample contains like a 2.5 to 15% organic like a, uh, content, which illustrate that the samples are all well grade degraded. The low pressure self-weighting consolidation test so that the coefficient of consolidation tends to be decreased with the additional pressure. So now both the log time and the uh, root time approach and the course variability in the coefficient of consolidation measurement due to the insufficient time and the, uh, for our secondary consolidation. And uh, also like uh, the laboratory works, of course, and uh, they are labor intensive. Instead, the modeling and the optimization approach has been carried out already. The hyperbolic tangent function is introduced to model the curves in the log time measure, where the nonlinear least square estimation is performed to parametrization optimization. And then based on the numerical simulation, the optimal elapsed type T50 and the two other parameters are reached instantly. The coefficient of a co consolidation has been computed via, uh, via the empirical equation right away. The outcomes are shown to be between those results from the two existing graphical uh, graphical approach. So that's the end of uh, my presentation, and uh, we have uh, like a set of the reference, and uh, here those reference are listed in these slides.
Okay, now I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you to you. Uh, uh, if there is any question in the public, please. Questions? No, no questions. I have a question. Sure. Uh, have you encountered a numerical problem when solving the optimization problem? Uh, you mean the numerical simulation, yes, right? Yes, numerical simulation, because you are you are performing numerical simulation, and okay. in, in, I don't know, I don't, don't understand, do you have used a Newton method, or what kind of method have you used exactly to perform the optimization? Uh, basically, like I say, we uh, uh, for the OD curve, and uh, we have, and uh, it's based on the MathLab program, okay? And regarding the MathLab program, if we only apply the simple least squares estimation, that is, like I said, like, uh, that one can be made like, in the short time, because basically it's not very difficult. It's not like some other, like I say, artificial intelligence approach. The nonlinear, like I said, least square estimation, and uh, like I said, like, uh, we can do that one quickly. Okay. And okay. You, yes, in the case you use another kind of sigmoid, and you, you are using the hyperbolic tangent, you can change the, this curve to, for example, to obtain a simpler uh, Jacobian. Could, could, okay. you, could you consider this uh, situation? Yes, you are using the tangent, the hyperbolic tangent. You, can, you could use, for example, logistic, uh, not a logistic equation to reduce the computation time. Have you comments on this issue? Oh, so far, like I said, like, uh, this uh, hyper tangent function is the only one we have tried. Okay. Because like uh, from the like original curve, based on the two graphical approach, both of those has uh, this type of the like I said, like, uh, the curve. That's the reason, like I said, like, uh, it's just inspire us and to do something like uh, the uh, nonlinear modeling. Okay. That is a find out, like I said, like a hyper tangent, like I said, like a modeling. It just like I say, this curve, the pattern is uh, similar to what happens in our, like I said, like a uh, graphical uh, approach. That's the reason we want to use it. Okay. So but it's, of course, it's, there could be other yes. better measure, but so far, this one to us, this one is the best one we can have right now. Okay. In future, we hopefully we can have a more complex model. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your response. Any question, please, from the public? More questions? We will do, we thank your presentation. It's very interesting. And okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. With this presentation, we finish this uh, section. And you are invited to the next. I, I don't know when is the next uh, session. Valente? Uh, today, let me check the. Yes. Four, 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. there will be another another session. I don't remember the name of the session. You can re, you could put the, the presentation in the, in the screen, please. Yes. Session control application at 4 p.m. You're invited to the next session in about two hours. Okay, thank you. Fin we finish uh, this session and goodbye. Gracias.